wisdom, knowledge, imagination. These have always been the greatest of aspirations for humanity's quest towards evolution. To the seeking out and discovering of new ideas, to the breaking of barriers of potentiality and expanding the boundaries of the mind. They have and always will survive the tests of time, remaining ageless and infinite. These are the stories of the masters, the leaders, the outliers, that will take you beyond the existing limits of thought, stepping through the looking glass of imagination and into new realities of possibility. Thank you for daring to expand with us. But welcome, welcome everyone to the Infinite Wisdom Interview Series. Today's guest is author, trainer, and coach, Mr. C. James Jensen. And he began his career as a salesman. Believe it or not, an Encyclopedia Britannica salesman. So some of you might not know what that is, <laughs> but I'm sure most of you do. Um, <clears throat> and within seven years, he became an international sales manager in charge of worldwide sales. And, uh, um, and he also, in that realm, became a, a voracious student and, and teacher of many of the principles that uh, he put into his book, Expand the Power of Your Subconscious Mind. And he ultimately became president and CEO of two additional companies and that each became the leading company within its respective industry. So this guy is hooked up. Um, he attributes much of his success um, of those, and for his end of those companies to, um, to all of the principles that he actually put down in his book, Expanding the Power of Your Subconscious Mind. He's got an amazing story about creating and growing his own personal development company and his, his profound knowledge with noetic sciences. And we are, Jim, we are just so happy to have you here today. Thank you, welcome for, and thank you for taking the time. My pleasure. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you were we were talking uh, before the show started about, uh, about your background. Please share that with the, with the audience. Well, as you said, I started, <clears throat> I worked my way through college selling pots and pans. So I guess I was, destined to be in the sales field, but I did join Encyclopedia Britannica and it gave us <clears throat> some great uh, international exposure. And I'm talking back in 1977, we were sent to Sydney, Australia and I was placed in charge of sales. My wife and I were, I think we're 25 years old and, and no kids at that time. And we were in charge of sales for all of Australia, New Zealand. And uh, so got to travel a lot. And two years later, I was placed in charge of worldwide sales that same month, <clears throat> January 1979. I was featured uh, in the cover story of Fortune magazine called A Gallery of Business Wonders. And these were people that they selected, I think, there were half a dozen, dozen of us, but under the age of 28. And I, I have to say, I think... Uh, I want the audience to know that I have always been a student and I think I'm a good learner and I have found people like yourselves that I can interact with and learn from. I don't consider myself some brilliant genius that's created uh, a bunch of things that people don't know about, but I have found those people who are that and have been able to learn what it is that they know. How did they learn it? How can I benefit from learning it? Just like your participants and the members of your organization, why are they tuned in? They're tuned in to access knowledge and learn things that are probably not part of their ordinary uh, daily educational system. They're not going to get it in just reading the newspaper every day. Sure. And so I continue, I, I, I uh, identify myself personally to myself as more of a student than a teacher. 
and I just uh, have an insatiable appetite for learning. I think I've been able to really learn the true relationship, which I'd like to share with your audience today, between the conscious and the subconscious areas of the mind, and they're so totally different than what we are taught in school, and that just baffles me. But we'll get to that as we move along. And welcome to your audience, and I'm thrilled to be a guest on your show. Thank you very much. So I think a good place to start then, I think, is maybe just putting some clarity around uh, because, you know, when I when I was doing hypnosis, it was always a question of, you know, what is uh, the conscious, the unconscious, the subconscious, the superconscious and what you call the supraconscious. Can we get some definite some clarity around those things so that people get an idea and the framework framework of what it is we're going to be talking about? Well, sure. The conscious mind is that part of us that's acting right now, listening, watching, seeing. Uh, it does go to sleep at night, maybe has some wild dreams, but that would be at the subconscious level. But the conscious mind is that part that does our thinking. It, it, we make decisions. What am I going to wear today? What am I having for breakfast? Where am I going? Uh, that's all dialogue at the conscious level. The subconscious is really what needs greater definition and examination compared to what is not taught in our school systems. And predominantly within the school system, we're told the primary functions of the subconscious is to handle our bodily functions. You know, it grows our hair, it, well, for some of us, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, it, it takes care of our physical needs. And, but it doesn't, we aren't taught of its incredible uh, knowledge to compute things and to, to find answers. It has access to all knowledge in the universe, period. But we need to learn how to use it. And uh, in my book, Expand the Power of Your Subconscious Mind, we teach that, and once we get a clear understanding of the real power of the subconscious, it opens doors that have never really been opened, maybe accidentally, but we didn't have a process for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we can really do some creative things when we realize that we have this toolkit that has access to all knowledge. So when we get stuck with a problem or something that we're not dealing with, forget about the fact that it's digesting our food, we can say to the subconscious, I need greater data on this. And we become very, very, very specific uh, about what it is we're seeking. We also use the subconscious, which you teach uh, for affirmations uh, because the subconscious is a servo mechanism, but it'll, it'll work just as hard to achieve a negative instruction as it will a positive instruction. So if you're saying to yourself all the time, God, I just can't remember names. They say, we got it boss, we'll make sure you don't. And it sees you and, oh geez, what's that guy's name? Well, I can, I can, I'm not gonna show you that, you, you know, you don't. So it, it's very, it keeps you consistent with who you describe yourself to be. Yeah. So if we're going to change that, we need to expand and realize the toolkit. The example we use in the book is, and this is thanks to Joseph Murphy, uh, to visualize an ocean liner going across the sea. And the captain would be like the conscious area of the mine up in the helm of the ship, you know, barking out signals to the crew, full speed ahead, port starboard, whatever. The crew is like the subconscious. And they're down in the hold of the ship underneath the water level. They can't even see, see where the ship is going. But the captain says, you know, 10 degrees right. Da, da, da. They just say, aye, aye, sir, carrying out the orders, not minding whether they hit another vessel, you know, go up on the rocks or get safely to their destination. Mm -hmm. So it's an incredibly powerful thing. And we need to become very, very aware of our own self-talk 
what we're saying to ourselves about ourselves, to realize that our well-intending parents may have given us some early definitions of what we're good at, what we're not so good at. And we looked up to them and thought, well, they know everything. And so many of us carry those things forward. Well, I've just never been good at, you know, da da, or I, I am excellent at this. Well, we can redesign that whole program and just go to a blank canvas and identify those things. I mean, I, I remember one time wanting to lose, I'd gained some weight and I was at 220 pounds and I wanted to get down to 195. So I just created an affirmation, first person, present tense. I look good and feel good at one, not I'm going to. I look good and feel good at 195 pounds. And I'd shut my eyes and visualize myself in that new attire, the new suit, when I was walking to the office and the employees are saying, Jim, you look so great since you've lost all of that weight. Now this doesn't give us an excuse to move our bed next to the refrigerator. So we've got some, <laughs> make some other, you know, I, I, only, I eat only enough to maintain my perfect weight of 195 pounds. And within 90 to 120 days, I was at 195 pounds. This morning I weighed, I'm at 198. And I've stayed in that range that whole time. But, but these are things that you teach and uh, that I have been blessed to have learned and, and been taught by the masters in this field. So but we talk about, I'm just going to interject here. So we talk about um, affirmations a little differently in, in that, uh, and, and, you know, some of it's just more definition. The, the thing that we really promote and, and teach our people is that you're either invoking reality or you're declaring it. Right, so you're either declaring your reality that you're having, or you're invoking a reality that Correct. you're stepping into. Right, and and so so the old model of affirmations was not that. Right, the old model of affirmations was, well, I hope I'm going to get this thing. So, so you put together some nice words and you say it over and over and and hope that something happens from that. Right, and, and that's that's kind of so so when when that traditional model of affirmations is not something Ross and I promote, but what you do is different. And I think people need to get this if they get the book. Yeah, and definitely it is what you do is different. You actually turn it into a, a invoking ritual because yeah. it's it's getting the word, making it um, in the present as if now, which is good and, and is taught by a lot of the you know the goal setting type stuff out there. But adding the visual component and then adding the 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 emotional component, creating a quote unquote ritual around it where you're actually invoking a reality as opposed to just hoping someday it'll happen. I think it was important for me just to make that distinction so people don't think that we're saying, oh, go do affirmations when for two years we said it's not the model that we suggest. Well, you're so correct. And, and we also teach the importance of discontinuing the negative self-talk that gets in the way of what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. So if I want to lose weight and I'm saying, I just can't lose weight. I've tried. I can't lose weight as an instruction to yeah. the subconscious. Yeah. And they love you unconditionally. Right. And they just say, we got it, boss. We'll make <laughs> sure you don't lose weight. So yeah. don't worry about it. You know, you can count all the calories you want. So we really need to be very consciously aware of how we talk to ourselves. And the third component is the supra conscious. And that is the area that has access to all knowledge in the universe. And we teach specific procedures in the book on how to access this for creative problem solving. Nice. I can remember one time when I was president of Grand Tree Furniture Rental, we had grown rapidly from $7 million in sales to over hundred million. And we were stumbling with a marketing problem. So I got our marketing geniuses together on a Friday afternoon five or six of our senior managers. And I brought in Kathy Hornsby, who was our uh, corporate secretary. Mm -hmm. She was from England. She couldn't spell marketing, what well, she could actually. But, uh, and I said, take some notes, Kathy. So I said to this group, look, we've struggled with this long enough. So I'd like you all to turn this over to the supraconscious. And we're gonna meet at 10 o'clock Monday morning and we'll get a total solution total solution to this problem. 
We meet at 10 o'clock Monday morning. I said, okay. I said, what is the solution to this situation we've been working on? And little Kathy Hornsby raised her hand. She said, Jim, can I say something? I said, sure, Kathy, what? She says, well, you know, I was working in the garden over the weekend and this thought came to me, is there any reason we couldn't, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and all the marketing geniuses said, holy, you know, why didn't we think of that? And it was a perfect solution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once we've had the experience with this, whether it's dealing with relationships, business things, money things, whatever, uh, it's an incredibly powerful tool. And we introduced that big time uh, in the book and how to use it, how to benefit from it. And that's the supra conscious. That's awesome. So once again, for those of you that are watching um, and our guest is uh, James Jensen, and um, he's, he's got a book called Expand the Power of the Subconscious Mind. And um, it's a really, really great book. If you want to grab it, we've got the link in the comments. And uh, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. If you have any questions about the unconscious mind, how we condition it, um, you know, what its purpose is, anything like that, that we can add in here, we will. I just wanted to kind of interject that because I see we've got a good boost and people just jumped on. So, And also let us know in the comments where you're chiming in from. I'm sorry? I was saying to the, to the audience to, to let us know where they're chiming in from in the comments and if they have any questions right. uh, or comments. Uh, so, um, so the book is, is a, uh, an addition to an existing book that's been in existence and one I read when I was very young. Um, do you want to tell us about that story? Because I, I, found, I found it very interesting how you came about um, uh, being a part of that book with Joseph Murphy and, and, and taking it to the next level. So uh, I think that'd be a great story to share. Uh, and then we can kind of dive a little deeper into that piece of it too. Well, I think I stated at age 27, I went through this four day seminar yeah. by John Boyle. And, uh, and I, at the end of the seminar, I said, someday I'm going to teach your seminar. Someday I'm going to own your company. Ha ha ha. But uh, <laughs> those things did happen. And, I used to say to John, where did you learn all of this? Now, this was before we had home computers. We couldn't just Google something, you know, and say, tell me about uh, superconscious. Um, and he just said, I studied uh, with a guy by the name of Joseph Murphy. He didn't tell me he'd written a book. And I couldn't Google. There was, there was no Google system, Joseph <laughs> Murphy. But I had that name in the my, back of my brain. And Several years later, we were living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and one of our salespeople came into my office and he put a book on my desk. He said, you know, I've heard you speak. I think you might like this book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. I said, oh my God, could, th could this be the same Joseph Murphy? And it was. <laughs> and I called the publisher and said, would you like to sell the publishing rights to this book? And after we had a little chit chat and kind of few laughs with each other. He said, Jim, you seem like a good guy. I'd love to take your money, but you need to know this book is in public domain. Murphy That's so awesome. 1980. Mm, that is so anybody, awesome. <laughs> anybody can slap another title on the book and publish it. So um, I thought, okay. And then I'd written a couple of previous books, one, Seven Keys to Unlock Your Full Potential, a couple of others. But I thought, uh, and I, I wrote one where I took excerpts of Murphy and then I added my stuff. I thought, you know, he, I, I can't do that. So I went back and in this book, all of Murphy's original text is part one of the book. Nice. And again, he died in 1980. I think his book was published in 1962 or so. And, and so what part two of the book is, is my trying to bring this context and content into the 21st century uh, with all the wonderful leaders that, that we know of today, mm -hmm. uh, including those with the Institute of Noetic Sciences and wherever. And that's what I think we have accomplished with this book. And at the end of our little uh, discussion here, I'm gonna tell your audience something that they can do to get some real quick grasp of the, the basic content 
the, the, the really the best content in the book. Great. That's great. So just Nothing a quick like a uh, comment. Sorry, <laughs> uh, um, the, Karen uh, said that we, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear a statement to say to heal from breast cancer. What kind of statements do you suggest for people that want to heal from any kind of illness or sickness, whether it's breast cancer or, or something generic and they can kind of fill in the piece for whatever's going on for them um, to share? Like what would, what would be a, a um, a ritual around that that you could suggest for them to do? Well, the simplicity is the, uh, I have this problem where I was diagnosed with this situation and I respect the science behind that, but I am gonna move forward and get this healed. And I look good and feel good uh, without having to deal with breast cancer any longer. Now, I'm not suggesting anybody get rid of their physicians or the medical field, yeah, but you yeah. need to re, every time you say, I have breast cancer, that's an instruction to the subconscious. We'll yeah. make sure you do, because it's non judgmental. So yeah. we need to start with our own self talk. Yeah, you're either not declaring be, or invoking. Not right? Not <laughs> right. Be careless, not be. I did have a healing. In 1981, we were living in Sun Valley, Idaho and about to move to Seattle to take on a new job. And I was really, really, really feeling, I don't know, there was something wrong. And I went and saw my physician and he said, I had a terrible case of mononucleosis. And I said, well, what, how long does that take to fix? Because I said, <laughs> I'm starting a new job in 10 days. And he laughed. He said, well, Jim, I appreciate your positive thinking, blah, 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 but <laughs> molecules, and he goes through the whole description. So I was in the hospital. I was, I was in uh, intensive care, and it was just one of those times where I said, I think I've been given the gift to have been introduced by the superconscious. Let's see what happens. So that night, uh, I never really went to sleep, and I just visualized healing energy coming in through my third eye, into my body mm -hmm. and just over and over and over. There was no religious association. Uh, uh, I use G-O-D as part of our life. Uh, but in the morning, uh, I called my wife and said, would you please bring my jogging shoes, shorts, and a T-shirt? <laughs> and the on-site doctor said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to go for a... a eight mile run. He laughed, he says, Jim, respectfully, you won't get to the front door. Well, he was right. I didn't get to the front door, but I did run eight miles. And when I got back, my physician was there. And I said, would you do me a favor and just draw my blood and tell me what you see? And he says, oh, Jim, he says, you're crazy. So he calls me an hour later, he says, you gotta come in for another blood draw. And I said to myself, yeah, cause you didn't find any mono, did you? But I respected him and went in and said, okay, let's do it again. And that, that story is in the book. It's just, nice. um, I don't stand on, stand on this soapbox and tell people this stuff. It's just, we have access. We have access to more knowledge and more power than what our current educational system shares with us or with our kids. And that's why you guys exist, because you're providing a vehicle and an avenue for people to learn things that are beyond what they already have learned, that can be applicable to their business, it can be applicable to their family, to their parenting, toward their relationships, toward their body, towards anything. And once you get on that path, you, 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 it's, 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 and it doesn't mean that we don't have issues that we need to deal with and this and that and so on. But there's a great sense of comfort and confidence and knowledge uh, that we can also share with our friends and family. And that's what it's all about. Well, you know, I mean, that what you're just saying is, is, is proof of what, um, you know, a lot of the other trainers that are out there, whether it be, you know, Bruce Lipton, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden and such who are, promoting this type of uh, thought process to naturally heal our bodies. You know, 
Um, and they're, they've taken it beyond to where they're using the science that's now available to us to prove that, that this does work. Yeah. Um, and, but what we see, um, and tell me if you agree, is that you see that your, your, whether it be your medical industry or your institutions are fighting that, saying, no, no, you're wrong. And where uh, I, what I believe is that a lot of people who are trying to use these, these, these processes like you're, you're describing and such, but that, that glimmer of doubt weaves in and then it doesn't work because it's just, it's become so ingrained and, and they're constantly being bombarded by this different type of messaging, whether it be from medical experts or the media, et cetera. Um, how do you uh, feel that people can, um, you know, combat that type of, of thinking? I mean, you, you were able to do it re regardless of what your doctor said and such, but you're a, a, a unique individual as well. You know, you have, you know, a, 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 a pretty much a very disciplined type of thinking you um, have the, the background and the knowledge to, to make something like that work. How does the average person who's listening, how do they go, well, I'm, you know, like, um, like Karen, she's like, I have this, how do I make this work? How do I really get my thought process to go in that direction? Well, everybody has a different viewpoint of what we're talking about here. And we're, right. this is like a smorgasbord. You <laughs> you go through the line, you don't take a piece of everything that's there. You sample this, oh, I don't want that, you know. Right. And, and so that's what I try to do with audiences is say, look, just, you know, you love yourself unconditionally. And if you learn anything here that might be helpful along the way. But I was fortunate to, and, and still am today, I think, to be more of a student than a teacher. And I think life, I mean, 30, 40 years ago, we couldn't talk. I mean, it was a complete leap of faith if somebody did this and they were called far out, you know, what are you doing? And, but today yeah. there is a lot of science <laughs> that backs and supports the things that we're talking about. And if somebody has an appetite to learn more, mm -hmm. uh, you can direct them through your own organization to other places. And certainly noetic sciences is a good place for people. It may not be for everybody. But it's all, it's a house of uh, PhDs, of, of, you know, very, very brilliant academic people. It's not a woo-woo camp where people have created some imaginary thing to believe in at all. And I'm not looking for that either. We were discussing that uh, before the show started. Tell everybody a little bit more about the Institute of Noetic Science. Well, again, it was created by Edgar Mitchell, mm -hmm. who was the sixth man to walk on the mood the moon and had a terrific experience on the moon. And his description of that was that he had access to all knowledge. I guess you would say in the internet, he said there were no unanswered questions. And he said, I've got to create a mechanism or an uh, organization that can learn more and more and more about this and share it with the members. <clears throat> and uh, so the organization is heavily uh, supported with really brilliant people who mm -hmm. have studied these different areas, uh, many of whom do have their PhDs. And they're not on a mission to get anybody, you know, to sign up for the belief system. They just provide information and knowledge to those people who want it. And it's very inexpensive organization to be a member. I, I don't know what it is today, but I think it's like $70 $50 a year to be a member and uh, they get newsletters every month and just kind of breakthroughs things think you might create a breakthrough in things that you're doing that noetic science would hear or learn about and want to broaden uh, the knowledge of that to their membership base as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not about dialing for dollars. That's not what they're about. They are about spreading uh, the truth about life that much of which, much of which is not yet taught in our school system. Right. It's not a religious thing. It's not a leap of faith. It's not believe in this or else. 
it's 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 nothing like that it's mm -hmm. just factual information and let the reader or the student decide for themselves how they want to use it mm -hmm. i dropped the uh, link for the uh um for the uh, website for them um and uh, membership is 60 dollars. 60. <clears throat> mm -hmm. and uh but you don't have to necessarily be a a, a member to really glean a lot of information off their website right. Um, it's, it is a phenomenal source and it is just, just science. Like That's this funny. I said, I thought the membership was between 70 and then I said 50. Gosh, what's <laughs> between 70 and 50? Um, <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, they call that 60. Okay. They, they say they're pretty, they're happy to accept 5,000 too. So, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it is a phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal website i recommend everybody just kind of poke your poke in and uh take a look and uh, you'll see some amazing amazing stuff there um i've gone to it many many times somebody in the community had just recommended them to me or um asked me if i at least if i had um uh been involved with them and i'm like yeah i said i, I am and they they just ranted and i'm like ah but i haven't visited them for quite some time so take take a look very, yeah. very good. All right, cool. So with the book, I wanted to kind of get back to the book a little bit. <clears throat> um, so you said the second half is more of your interjection. Can you give us an idea on what that is, what your contribution to adding on to it to, to expand what Joseph has done? Well, I think that again, so much has happened since he wrote his book in 1962. Yeah. And, and just, I mean, my goodness. So I think I am an insatiable learner, not so much teacher, but I like to know what, what is happening. And when I find people that uh, I think I can benefit from what they know, you know, I link up with them and, and I'll tell you what the, the audience could benefit from is if they were to go to my website, and I said earlier, it's all lowercase cjamesjensen.com. Yeah, we dropped that in the, in the comments already. Good. And go down to the third video, which is where I made a presentation to, I, I said this earlier, but to Apollo Ono's sale, 400 salespeople in Canada. And I think that uh, that explanation of what I've learned and again, say learn. I'm, I don't pres pre describe myself as some genius that created all this. I think I'm a good student uh, and pass this along. But that website has got a lot. First of all, the book's now printed in 10 different languages. And mm -hmm. the website has got a lot of information how to use this data. And I just, I hadn't seen the website for six, eight, 10 months, I don't know. But uh, in preparing for our meeting today, I wanted to just review that. And I had to go in and say to my wife, this, this is just fantastic stuff. And it was my presentation of the material, but I didn't create the material. I learned mm -hmm. from those that did. And Apollo Ono was uh, gracious enough to invite me up to talk to his five or 600 salespeople. So that's awesome. Yeah, I, I put the link specifically to the video page on the chat as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So what was it about the what I mean to kind of better entice everyone? What is it about that video that you liked so much? I mean, because you had said prior to uh prior to the interview that you were just taken back by it, that it was so awesome. Well. I, I think that uh, the audience would certainly be an audience I would relate to. They were the national sales team mm -hmm. from Canada. Uh, probably 80% were female. Uh, and I think I'm able to take what could become complicated knowledge and messages and simplify it into a direct experience for anybody that wants to use it. And because uh, that's what I had done with myself. And so I kind of, I, I was uh, enthused this morning 
with the clarity with which a could be complicated subject, I was able to share with this group of people in a way that that they could understand and benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, we're not asking your audience to take a leap of faith and totally change their lives. But if they want to explore a resource that could expand their own consciousness, their own subconscious, and understand it at a different level, and especially those that have children, because this information is so valuable in parenting. And we were blessed to have gone through this training before we had our first children. Today, our oldest child is the headmaster at a school uh, with three-year-olds to fifth grade, and she mm -hmm. does an incredible job as a result. But I do think that our being exposed to this data at a young age and passing it along has been very helpful. And I'd, let, I'd like the your audience to form their own opinion. You know, go to that site, read a little bit. If you think you want to know more, continue. Uh, if you think, you know, this probably isn't for me, great. Love you unconditionally, just the way you are. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a peddler. I'm not a peddler. I, yeah. well, we can tell. Part of my life early. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, um, getting back to Gary's uh, uh, question, you know, what are, what are some of the... Uh, what are kind of some of the, the things that you have, that stood out to you that you felt were necessary to put into the second half of this book that didn't get covered by Dr. Murphy? Well, can certainly. you kind of give us a kind of like a quick punch list of those? Yeah, certainly uh, the to better understand the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious areas of the mind. Mm -hmm. and how they work with each other, the incredible importance of managing and being attentive to our own self-talk. Because the subconscious is non-judgmental. Mm -hmm. And it will work just as hard to achieve a negative instruction as it will what we would call a positive instruction. So like, you know, if you're saying, I always forget names or I always, I used that example earlier, they say, we got it, we'll make sure, you know, you don't get it. Now they have access to all of that data, but they can thumb through the data and they have a love affair with the conscious area of you and they will feed you the data you are asking for. They don't think in terms of positive or negative. Mm -hmm. They just say, okay, uh, you wanna be uh, not effective at this. And we got it, we got it. We'll make sure that we take care of that. So it's an oversimplification, but I think using Dr. Murphy and using other sources in the book that are very highly renowned and, and successful in their careers, I think will cause people, there's an old saying that once one's mind has been stretched by a new idea, it can never return to its original dimension. Right. And so, I think we will provide some information that is mind expanding. And I'm not pushing any particular point of view at all. On the contrary, right. I'd like the reader to take over uh, managing the content, but knowing <laughs> that they have some tools they can use and capacity that they may not have been using because they, the tools are really not taught in schools today right yeah it sounds like uh your methods and and uh overall philosophy is very similar to ours as to where we don't have a specific agenda um with the exception of just helping people think differently looking at the different yeah. options that are out there and at the point we we call it you know uh, observe interpret and respond and observe what's happening, interpret it. And that's kind of the process that a lot of us kind of skip when we go simply to, you know, observe or witnessing and to reacting. And that's what we're seeing a lot lately in, in uh, the, uh, the arena of the world. Um, but we really, really want people to say, okay, so this is what you're, this is what you're interpreting. 
Now, where did that interpretation come from? Where did that definition originate? And then from there, choose whether you it's serving you or not, and then make another decision of whether you want it to continue. Because now you have a choice. You always have a choice. And many well, people in today's society believe that they don't have a choice. And it's very disempowering. You know, in our school system, if you think about it, there's not a lot of heavy discussion of the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious areas of our mind. Mm -hmm. And that's really what my focus of study has been and what I like to share to other people. So it's very non-threatening to look at this data. The hope is they'll see something that they didn't know about or hadn't seen before and said, there's no downside to my incorporating this, you know, and giving this a go, uh, whether it's success in the workplace, finding another job or a company or whatever people are working on. And uh, so there's no hard, fast, it's this way and only this way. No, that's not who I am or what the teachers I have are. Mm -hmm. But I have been blessed to be, have been around a lot of people that have really, really, really studied life and, and uh, shared with us as an audience what they've learned along the way. Exactly. So with your daughter being the headmaster of a school, has she incorporated some of these beliefs in the, the work that she does? I think in the way that she, not, not academically, mm -hmm. not taught to three or four or five years old, but in the way that those people are treated and the way they're encouraged to treat others, to be good listeners. Mm -hmm. You know, kids that age are sometimes hard to put the clamps on, but, uh, uh, <laughs> and to observe, to observe the, everything eventually gets around L-O-V-E. Mm -hmm and supporting love and uh and that's not used in a religious context uh right. you know it's just it's just to be as loving and as giving as we can be will enhance our growth in every area and areas of our lives mm -hmm. so um Karen says, I love Joe Dispenza, but I have a difficult time truly figuring out, oh, this damn thing's scrolling. Where'd it go? Oh, man, I lost it. There we go. Okay. Um, I have uh, truly, why is this thing scrolling on me? I lost it. Okay, there we go. It's bizarre. I know. It's, it's very not making this easy for me to read this. And I'm going to copy that and paste it here. Okay, so uh, it says, she says, uh, I, I love Joe Dispenza, but I have a difficult time truly figuring out how to get out of my head and into whatever he talks about going to heal. Is there an easy explanation of how to surrender and go to this place? And I think there's a couple of quick things I can respond on that, and, and maybe you can jump in too, Jim. Uh, one is in the book, um, Joseph talks about using the unconscious mind for forgiveness. And sometimes when we have a sickness like cancer that shows up, one of the key things you need to do is forgive yourself for allowing that to happen. And, and, and cause if you don't, there's resentment with self and therefore you're never going to get to the place of surrender. And so that's one of the first things. And then you also talk about in the book, there's a, um, uh, a chapter that you go on about resilience and bouncing back from setbacks. You want to talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's also when you get the setback of the sickness, whatever it is, it, how do you come back from that to a place of, of being ready to heal? Well, I think, again, to be aware of our own self-talk affects the healing or lack thereof process, and it can have a meaningful impact on the length of time that people experience something. Mm. So we don't want to ignore uh, whatever symptoms we've been diagnosed with and what we've been recommended to do to help from the medical process heal that. But when we 
learn more about the power, positive or negative, of our own self-talk, yeah. we may stop saying, I have this terrible, terrible disease. I just can't get rid of it. That's an instruction mm-hmm. to the subconscious. I can't get rid of it. Well, wait a minute. Time out. Uh, I do have symptoms that have been medically diagnosed that I'm taking uh, prescriptions for. Right. Work through this quickly, hopefully. And I look forward to it no longer being part of my system. And every day, I'm going to feel better and better and better. Or something like that. But it doesn't have to be, it's got to be something the individual themselves can feel comfortable with, feel good about. And we're not starting a new religion here or something that they have to believe in XYZ Almighty. Uh, It's just... uh, the person has to see that they are X, Y, Z almighty in terms of the tools and the capacity that they have Mm -hmm. and to start using that effectively and just become more, more of what they really are. I I mean, we go real strong on the, on the terminology and the language that, that people use. I mean, we don't focus on health, but we, at the same time we do. Um, what do you, what are your thoughts on um, a lot of the whether it be the marketing or the um, the way that people are encouraged to fight your cancer, destroy your cancer, um, you know, eradicate the the, the cancer from your body? Because um, in my opinion, I'm just like, well, then aren't you fighting yourself? Where 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 do you where where do you draw the line as far as how somebody should talk to themselves about a particular illness. Well, they need to be direct with themselves. Mm -hmm. Again, try to come from a position of love, not Mm -hmm. in denial. You're not denying, denying something that, you know, so the denial is not part of what we're talking about here, but the more you can, one can open uh, the doors to the energy of love. Mm-hmm. And it's a healing mechanism. And, and there's nothing religious about that, that, that people that can embrace the reality of something they're experiencing, and, but separate it from who they really are. Yes, they have a body, but we are more than just our body. Um, and just... Be loving, be loving, be honest, be truthful, and do also what your experts are telling you should do. Mm-hmm. That's the medical community. Follow everything they tell you and, and do it enthusiastically saying, I know this is making me better and better every day and try to stay away from I'm getting worse and worse every day, you know, because the symptoms may suggest that, but try to limit the amount of self-talk that's used in describing the bad part of something. And again, it's not in being in denial. It's just, I want to access all of the energies and powers available to return my, this part of my body to normality. And I support that. And I encourage the fact that every day I am going to get better and better. We got yeah, really focused here on, on physical uh, treatment of the body here. And that was not my intent, but it, <laughs> is part, it certainly is part of what we teach. Uh, well, what, self-talk, is, is self-talk is so important. And, and you know, we, we definitely um, adhere to that as well. Uh, why don't you share, like, why is self-talk so important? Because t- I, I remember hearing you talk somewhere about the numbers of you know, how many words per minute and stuff like that. And, 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 you know, that amount of communication that's going on all the time and how that's reinforcing, again, going back to either declaring your reality or invoking it. Uh, So can you share a little bit about that as far as what's the activity that's going on that people need to be aware of at the unconscious level? Um, And, you know, and, and, and I think it's also important to, when, when I was, doing hypnotherapy, one of the things I always tell my clients is that, 
your prime directive of your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind is your survival. That's its ultimate number one top priority. Okay? It wants to keep you alive as long as possible. Um, but the methods that it uses sometimes doesn't always <laughs> end up that way. <laughs> And that's because of the, the self-talk we get and, and the messages we get and the things we, we choose to believe or not believe in. So if you can talk a little bit about the activity of just so they know the magnitude of what's going on and understand the importance of that. Well, I think people uh, have an opportunity to, if they want, to learn more about the functionality of the subconscious and see it as a great ally mm -hmm. part of their livelihood and understand the power that exists in the subconscious and uh, just something like you know i want to know more about this this isn't going to a church and getting down on your knees and praying mm -hmm. this is saying i want to know the science of the subconscious i want to know how the conscious and the subconscious work together and that a lot of that is obviously in Dr. Murphy's book and mine. Uh, and I like the old saying that once one's mind has been stretched by a new idea, it can never return to its original dimension. And there's not a lot of work in our school system that uh, talks about this relationship. We just, like I say, simplicity. What is the subconscious? Oh, it takes care of our bodily functions. Oh. And how about the conscious? Well, that makes all the decisions and thinking. And, oh, okay, that's it. Yeah. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> but that's not all of it. So we have a wonderful, wonderful tool that is part of us called the subconscious. And it's in our benefit. And especially for our families and those listening that are parents and are raising children to learn of this relationship and let them know about it at an early age is the most wonderful thing you can do for your family and for yourself, period. And I think reading books like yours uh, and, and others like it gives parents um, references or different ways of communicating. It's because with the kids, it's you know to get them to understand the concept of there's this, this invisible thing inside that's doing this, it's, it's kind of tricky, right? So yeah. it's, it's having things like your book and um, examples that you go through and, and you know the, the case studies that you talk about and those kinds of things as examples that we can use as reference when we're speaking with not only our kids, but our other family members, friends, colleagues, and, and whoever we choose to support and empower, right? And um, so, yeah, I 100% agree. I think that that's definitely something we need to do more of as parents in the school system, um, in just in business, absolutely everywhere, for sure. I think it, it needs to be explored and the potential of it needs to be um, explored much more, for sure. Well, and take the parts that you resonate with that yep. you like and incorporate. You don't have to take everything that you read or that is said. So, you know, yeah. this part I don't really fully agree with. Great, next. But, you know, if, if you get a half a dozen good sound bites of things you didn't know you were not aware of before mm -hmm. that you can add to your decision-making process of what you choose to do, what your preferences are, how do you, you know, line all that up and what you're doing with your kids and your spouse and everything else, you, there's great benefit. You know, it's yeah, not and there's such a great... Yeah, and there's such great info out there, right? And and we 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 constantly say implement what you learn and then learn from what you implement because that's how you, <laughs> you know, that's how you figure out if it's going to work for you or if it's if it's in alignment with your vibration of who you are as an individual as a spirit, um, and and in alignment with your path on your journey. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sure. Well, we've got just a couple minutes left. Uh, Jim, why don't you tell everybody again um, where they can find you, how they can get a hold of you, where they can, I mean, I'm sure I've already put the link to Amazon for your book. Is it available in other, other locations on your website? Well, again, the website is the best place to start. Okay. That and is that is, the link to that is in the comments. Right? Jensen.com. Mm-hmm. 
click up on the video, go down to the there's three videos, go down to the third video, which it says 40 minutes Apollo. Mm -hmm. it, it's described that way. Watch that, have a big pad of paper and a pen or pencil, and just write down the things that you like and you want to know more about. And you don't have to accept everything that's said in there. But are, are there some nuggets in there that you were not aware of that you can use in the pursuit of your occupation, your relationship with your loved one, uh, parenting, it, whatever you're doing. Yeah. And, and it's not one size fits all. So you'll get some nuggets for sure. You mm -hmm. will be glad. I'm saying to your audience, you plural. You will be glad if you took one hour of your life and watched this presentation to Apollo Ono's group, because you will get some things out of that, that, and I didn't create this information. I learned from the masters who did. I'm just passing it along. Mm -hmm. I hope that you'll be one of those that will learn the same way I did and start passing it along to the people that are most important to you in your life. Yeah. That's the whole key here. Yeah. So you, and, you, you know, know I, I fully endorse the book because uh, Joseph Murphy's book, the um, original was one of the first few books that I got introduced to right after psycho cybernetics. Murphy was one of those ones, you know, in, in the small vicinity of new books when I started to explore um, the unconscious mind, subconscious mind and, hypno and, and hypnosis. And, and your addition to it definitely to add some more flavor and, and some more updated stuff was a really nice addition too. So yeah, yeah definitely I would recommend uh, once you watch the video, pick up the book, dive through it and um, implement what you learn, learn from what you implement. Exactly. Well, let me say one other thing to your audience, sure. Please. To those whose native language may be other than English, you can now buy the book in 10 different languages. Nice. And, and uh, so we're starting to see a big increase in international sales. That's pretty awesome. That's yep. very good. Yeah, we've got quite the global group as well. Um, uh, we have people from all over the planet that uh, are part of this group. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, and that's, that's just wonderful that, uh, you know, today's the, the age of communication today is, is broken down all the barriers. And now that you're able to get some of these uh, transcribed, I mean, that's uh, um, very nice, very, very nice. Well, my website does list the country and also the publisher in each of those countries that's mm. publishing the book. Oh, great. And, and uh, so I don't know right now, The best, I probably, I, I just probably, if I wanted to contact somebody, I'd try to send a note to the publishing company mm -hmm. or you can send it to... Yeah. to our company, uh, or you can send it to me. Mm -hmm. and, and it also uh, looks like you're available for speaking engagements um, and training. So you are still doing trainings? Yes, I am. Beautiful. And all that contact information is on his website under media events, speaking. There we go. And I'm happy to give my, if somebody really wants to have a personal conversation, they can send me an email and my email address is very simple. It's the J Jensen's plural T H E J J E N S E N S mm -hmm. Jensen's at AOL.com. Wow. There you I, go. I, I will, I will respond to any and every website I get or, or email and hopefully direct the person sending the information uh, to where they want, should go to get more data on their That's company. awesome. That is fantastic. Gary, any last words of wisdom from you? No, I think that's it. It was great chatting. I mean, we could go on and on and, uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll maybe have another outside of this conversation where we take things into other levels. Um, but yeah, thanks for showing up and and being here and and sharing your wisdom and insights and stories with our group. We really appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll be in touch with you again in some format, uh, one, one way or another. Absolutely. So thank you, everyone. It was a wonderful, wonderful interview. We uh, have many, many more on the books. And uh, 
Jim, such a pleasure. And uh, hang on be, uh, after we sign off and uh, we'll uh, make some last minute connections here. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, everyone. Be well, everyone. Remember, we dare you to be exceptional. The only way to do that is to learn from what you implement, implement what you learn and learn from what you implement. Until next time, we'll see you all. Bye-bye.